Hey everybody, Barry here again. Truck's on a lift again. That's not always a good sign, but we're doing it in the name of progress, upgrades, reliability, drivability. And I went and got a wheel alignment today and my camera's maxed out. So you can see right here that the tire is tipped out quite a lot. That's because with my camber bolts right up here, these maxed out all the way, I still don't have enough room. It's actually negative two degrees camber when it's got the weight on it. So to combat that, I'm gonna flip my control arms upside down. I wish I could give you a visual of it, but I actually can't get in under the truck when it's lowered, when it's on the ground because of how low it is. But the knuckle we'll say is level. The control arm is tipping up like big time. So I'm gonna flip the control arm over so that hopefully the angle where the ball joint is, is a lot more flat. I know that's kind of hard to visualize, but when you got a lowered truck, like my CV axle is pointing upward from the diff out to the wheel. So that means everything is pointed upward. Actually, I might be able to do it. So you can see right here anyway, we'll have a look that right now the knuckle and the upper part of the control arm are just about parallel. Let's lay it down on the ground for a second. So it might be still a little bit hard to see, but you can see that this angle of the ball joint right here, look how much that's tipped up in comparison to the flat part right here of the knuckle. You see how much that's tipped up. And that's only with the weight on the truck. The control arm hasn't uh, dipped yet with when the frame goes down, say if you hit a pothole or hit the brakes, the control arm is gonna sort of rise, or at least the frame is gonna go down so the angle upward is gonna increase. So that's putting a lot of strain on that ball joint. And I'm thinking that it may affect my wheel alignment out here. So what I'm gonna do is take this control arm, flip it over, take the ball joint out and put it in the opposite direction and that'll at least fix this angle here. Instead of being tipped upward, it'll be more downward, and I think it'll make it a lot better. It's crazy that my CV axle is actually on an upward angle. I've never seen that before. <laughs> I've never had a lowered truck before either, but that's cool. We began the wheel alignment, but couldn't finish it because there's no sense doing the caster and the toe if the camber can't be lined up. Negative two degrees, almost to the digit, was the max that we could get. So after I get this done, get the wheel alignment done again and see if it actually helped with the camber or not. Like, I'm, I really don't wanna have two degrees camber because it'll wear tires, but I'll live with it because I can't really afford like thousand dollar control arms that have more adjustability. I'll see if things are available, but it's probably gonna be where this stops. But if it does help and I can get maybe even closer to one degree camber, I'll be happy. So really, this is not a big job. One bolt here for the brake hose. My uh, bolt here is broken off anyway, so I, I haven't been able to clip that in, but it's a good time for me to remove that. Two upper control arm bolts, one ball joint bolt here, and that's it. <laughs> the hardest part is gonna be to get that ball joint out, flipped over and pressed back in without destroying it. But these are new ball joints that I bought, so Maybe they're defective. Now this is gonna be relatively easy because I already had these bolts out when I painted the frame. So. Just loosen the nuts. And I, I tried this before I knew what I was doing and thought I could unscrew the bolt from the nut, not knowing at the time that it was a slotted bolt. <laughs> Wondered why I couldn't get it to turn and I thought it was seized. But everybody was a rookie once, right? Near ball joint nut down here might be a different size than mine, but mine is an 18 millimeter. Yeah, there we go. You just unscrew that one. I'm gonna take off my ball joint bolt first before I get rid of these two up here, just to make sure that the ball joint is out of the way and it'll be easier to get it off with these two anchored. So there's lots of ways to get a upper ball joint to let go, but I find it's easier to just grab a beefy little hammer and smack it right there. We'll give it a real good smack.
There we go. The ball joint is let go. Now we can get up our upper control arm bolts. Now I already had these control arms off only a few weeks ago, so it shouldn't be seized. But again, this is a Chevy, so. Give these a wiggle to get them off. They like to stick on to the little alignment dowels. There we go. All right, now that the bolts are out, Ball joint out of the way. There we are. Much easier. And with a little bit of luck, both of these bolts will come right out. Look at that. Wow. This doesn't happen on trucks with a couple hundred thousand miles. At least not around here, anyway. Part. So here's a ball joint service tool. It's basically a big C-clamp that clamps in ball joints and removes them. Also good for U-joints and stuff like that. I don't think you'd be able to do this job without that. Like to try to save your ball joint, I mean. Now, if you had a big hydraulic press, yeah, you could do that. But to remove the ball joint and press it back in without destroying it, I think this is about the least expensive way to do it anyway. I have the ball joint press set up here. I took off the C-clip. I've got it set up so that the stud is free from the press and this plate right here is going to push the body of the ball joint down. There's a hollow right here that's going to allow the ball joint to fall and basically I'm going to tighten the uh, threads up here that's going to pull the C-clamp down. If it does damage the ball joint then I'll replace it. Well let's see if I can make a mess of parts out of it. Motivation. Probably going a little bit squished there. This would be easy with the right tool. Maybe I'm just using it wrong. Getting there. There we go. There's the mess of hurts. Well, I just looked at my ball joint and looks fine. No burrs or anything on it no flat spots and you'll notice that there's a little dot right here that dot goes out facing toward the wheel if you put the ball joint in wrong let's say if we put it in this way then you don't have the same articulation and you're going to break the ball joint it's made so that the ball joint can stick out this way and have a real good angle there so the ball joint was facing up now we're going to put it in facing down to make this easier and make sure I don't break it, I'm going to take out the grease nipple here, drop it on the floor, and then I'll put it over in the ball joint tool tray there so I remember where I put it. Just going to line that up by eye best I can. Put it in there, get it in pretty well square. 
and I don't know if I'll have to ream around the edges here or if it might work fine. But we will see. Is that going to sit? It is not going to sit there. Let's see. Let's see. So I'm going to put this one with the hollow end down so that the stud sits in right there. And what are we going to use? This one here, that one there, and I'll use a cup. This is always fun. Let's see if it's a, it'll go around the cup. Yep, so that one will go there fine. back. This is like a puzzle putting all this stuff together. Getting it lined up is key because if it isn't lined up nothing's going to go in there straight and then you're going to break something or strip something out or break the tool. You don't want to do any of those things. I'm going to give it a little head start with the hammer. Control arm is tapered, it gets smaller over toward the end, so it always wants to be falling off. Alright, so let's see if we can get this to go in there straight. See what happens. Look at that, much better. Yeah, you just pop the snap ring and the boot back on and we'll put it back together. Well, that's all back together. Let's go bolt it in. Now there's no grease in this now, so I'm gonna fill it full of grease when I get it bolted in. That way the boot is squeezed down, lots and lots of grease in around the ball and the bushing and all that. And then when it squeezes out a little bit, then we know we're good. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to max out the camber on this right away. So I put it in that way. Well, I know I'm not going to have too little camber for sure. That bolt goes on this side. I know I'm not going to have too little camber. Because I just went on some forums and had a look. Love forums, by the way. And uh, people are saying you need a... Belltech uh, bushing kit for this, which is really starting to make sense. It comes with offset bushings for the control arms in the back there, and you just put them in with the hole facing back, or back as far as you can, and then that sort of pushes the control arm out, which makes sense because I'm having a difficult time getting this thing to camber out. So now is no more different than just installing a regular control arm. Looks like, oh yeah, I think the angle is going to be perfect. Now we can see with the suspension fully suspended, we've got a downward angle on the ball joint versus the pretty much flat or maybe even a little bit of upward on the knuckle here. So pay attention to that because now it looks like it's a really hard downward angle. 
but when I get the weight on it and this control arm comes up, I think it's gonna be very, very close to level or at least on a much better angle than it was before. Just gonna bolt this on here real quick. I'm gonna pump this full of grease, like I said, right now so that I don't forget. Come on. All right. And I'm just gonna wipe that excess off there because I really don't like having grease everywhere. I mean, it would stop it from rusting out, but still kind of annoying, huh? There we go, much better. Now, pop that one on there. The only difference now is the bolt for this brake hose bracket is gonna be sort of down in the recess. So I might have to get a longer bolt, but that's really not a big deal. I've got a little bit of a longer bolt. I think it's gonna work just fine. There we go. Not bad at all. And I also got my ABS wire clipped in there. Now I wouldn't normally go and tighten up these bushings or bolts here because the bushings could stretch and crack but I'm gonna be bringing this pretty much right back up to the wheel alignment anyway. So I'm just gonna go and tighten these down right now out to max camber because I can't get in under the truck with a wrench when it's down on its flat, it's too low. So I'm just gonna tighten these up now anyway. Well, I've got these tightened down. You can see I'm at max camber. We've got lots of hole here at the back. So that means the control arm is as far forward as it can go. And I've got them tightened down. I'm gonna go ahead and do the other side off camera because we just did it. And we'll check in when I get it done, see what the camera looks like, and have a look at the angle from the control arm to the knuckle. Well, I got my other control arm put on, and everything looks good. I found a way. I mean, I'm no pioneer by any means, but I was like, hey, why don't I put a jack stand on a control arm? Lay the full weight down on the truck, and then I can tighten up my control arms. And we can also see what kind of angle we have on that ball joint. Ooh. Hello, Mr. Spider Friend. Okay, what do we got here? Look at that. Oh, that is so much better. I would I would call that parallel. Off by a degree or two, maybe. That is so much better. And the full weight is on the suspension now, so as the suspension does this, it's just gonna kind of arc around relatively zero degrees, you know. It's not perfect, obviously, but look! That is so much better than the arm being tipped right up like that, and I, I was afraid that I was gonna pop a ball joint in may never have i'm sure many people have done it without looking at this at all but i didn't like it that is so much better oh wow look how close my uh, sway bar is to the control arm out here wow that's nuts yeah look at that man now i can go tighten up those bolts and uh, at least i got the bushings tightened up with the weight on the suspension so they won't tear on me that looks great well the rotor looks like it's tipped out of bunch but where it's got long short arm control arms as the suspension comes up the bottom arm actually pushes the knuckle out which i know sounds kind of funky but if you're familiar with it it makes sense so let's go bolt the wheels on and see if that wheel tips in nice and level or if it's still got a lot of camber on it well let's see what that control arm angle looks like We definitely still have camber. I don't think the angle has changed at all. It's still got, oh yeah, I'd say it's still a couple degrees, at least one degree anyway. So the control arm flip didn't help with the camber, which I didn't really expect it to because angles don't change. The control arm didn't get longer, you know, but it did help with the ball joint angle, which makes this 100% worth doing, especially if you have a lowered truck. 
With drop knuckles, I don't think this would happen because all it does is move the wheel bearing up. The suspension geometry stays the same, so you're not gonna have this issue. I did, however, order bushings. Aiden commented on a short that I made and he said Moog K6669 is a one degree offset camber bushing. So in a couple of weeks time when they come in, I'll be taking the control arms out again, pressing out the factory bushings, and I'll press in these offset bushings and we'll have a look at it together. That should get me way closer to spec. And I'm absolutely fine with having like one degree of camber, like ne or negative one degree. I'm fine with that. It'll even maybe help with handling a little bit. The old truck is coming together, man. And that actually doesn't look that bad over there. If you look at the front tire through the back here, it doesn't look horrible at all. It almost looks like it's got a little bit of positive camber, but not when you stand up and look at it. But anyway, I'm all done for today. So thanks for checking out the channel. Thanks to my YouTube members, patrons, and subscribers. If you want to check out my Patreon, it's patreon.com slash stationroadratrods. YouTube members link is down here. And thanks for watching. Have a great day, everybody.